Bakit nga ba kakaunti ang react opportunities dito sa bansa natin? Explore natin yan. Hi! If you're new here, I am Rem, also known as Kuya Dev, and I share tips and insights about building a career in tech and shifting careers into tech. Totoo nga ba na halos walang trabaho ng React dito sa Pilipinas? Depende rin eh, hindi ko alam eh. Wala akong numbers. But most probably, no, sa hula ko, is dumami yung mga nag-aral ng React. Tapos, I would consider the Philippines na we aren't really mature enough in terms of technology and innovation. So, there won't be a lot of companies here who are actually building web applications. Feeling ko mabibilang mo lang sa kamay mo yung mga kumpanya talaga na bumubuo ng web apps. Oo, marami dyan websites, no? Pero yung web applications na sinatawag, kaunti lang yan. Kasi nga, we don't see a need for it yet. No? Wala pa eh. Wala pa tayong shadow innovative companies here. Wala pa yung startup scene natin dito. We have yet to actually produce yung tinatawag nilang unicorn. Wala pa. I mean, ano, oh, andyan yung Gcash, but I don't really consider it as a homegrown or from the ground up na startup kasi it's backed by an institution, a huge conglomerate. So, I think it's more of a spin-off company for me. No? I might be wrong, but yun yung tingin ko sa kanya. Which is, it's not all that bad. Kasi, you know, we need companies like that pa rin kasi it generates jobs, it creates wealth. But, you know, wala pa tayong talaga yung sabihin natin someone na uh, from University of, I don't know, uh, Mindanao? Na makakabuo ng startup uh, application or SaaS company na would serve kahit man lang the Southeast Asian market? Wala pa tayong ganun. So, we are still lacking in terms of a culture of innovation, culture of problem solving, a culture of technology. Wala pa tayo doon. But that's a different issue. No? Iba yon. Ang kailangan natin i-address ngayon dito sa tanong mo is, oo, sige, given. Wala masyadong opportunities dito, dito sa Pilipinas about React. Pero bakit ka nakafocus lang sa Philippine market? Innovation is not happening here in the Philippines. But it must be happening elsewhere, di ba? There's a lot of companies in the US, in Europe, sabi natin even in India, that are building a lot of these web applications. And kung willing ka mag-venture into mobile applications, kasi yung React, alam naman natin, it can also be used in mobile applications using you know, React Native and Expo. Yun yung tanong doon. Why are you limiting? Why are you pigeonholing yourself sa Philippine market lang? Kasi if you do that, you're limiting your opportunities. Ala ka na agad. Ano na? Nagkipag-agawang ka sa napakaliit na piece ng pie na kung tutuusin yung pie, napakalaki. Although ngayon, oh, sabihin natin, the job market is quite hard, <laughs> for lack of a better word. But I just messaged a friend of mine na nagkitrain ng mga, mga aspiring tech professionals. Tapos sinahanapan ko siya, huy, may ano ka ba dyan? May mga kilala ka ba dyan? Or pwede ko may recommend dyan na mga junior Node.js developers? Or tight mid-level, no? Kasi nagaanap kami, baka meron ka dyan, baka mabigyan mo naman ako. And he said na parang, uy, yung mga junior ko, hard lahat. Kasi, oo, lumalabas sa mga news na mahirap maganda ng trabaho, pero if you built the right kind of skills, no? And you've put yourself out there, nag apply ka, eventually makakuha ka eh. Kasi there's not a lack of opportunities. There's a lack of applicants na may necessary skills na kailangan ng industry. Like for us, dito sa current company ko, nahirapa kami kumalap ng mga Node.js developers kasi yung mga nag-a-apply sa amin, pagtingin ko sa ano, resume, ano to? Bakit parang, oo, oh, five years of experience, pero parang, uh, parang hilaw pa rin. Di ba? Parang, again, just judging from the resume, ha? kasi parang nililista lang lang nila yung mga te- technologies na alam nila. They don't even discuss the impact. Kasi, madalas yun ang inahanap namin. Oo, oh, alam mo to, alam mo yan. Alam mo tong technology na to. Pero ano yung value na pre-provide mo doon sa kumpanya, no? If you could provide concrete numbers, napakaganda noon. But kasi pag tinignan mo ganyan, tapos ginanyan mo lahat ng mga resume na yun, 
halos pare-pareho. So, napaano ka titingin ngayon kung sino yung magi stand out, no? Kasi you want people who are a standing out. Sabi nga namin, ano pinag-uusapan namin nung lead front-end developer namin. Kasi ako, nasa back-end ako ngayon, eh. So, yun na yung nililead ko, eh. So, siya, nahihirapan din. Kasi nga, wala. At pare-pareho. Tapos, ang hilaw ng mga, ano, ng mga experience. Tapos, walang specialization na bubuo. Kasi, although lipat-lipat silang kumpanya at walang problema doon, walang problema kung lumilipat kayo ng kumpanya, pero pagkalipat nila ng kumpanya, yung ginamit nila, kunwari, sa first company nila, PHP sila. Sa pangalawang company, Ruby. Sa pangatlong company, JavaScript. I mean, that's fine. But if you're starting out, you need to build some sort of specialization. One year of PHP development, hala, hindi ka hala buong specialization doon. Hindi ka pa expert. Tapos, sundo mo pa ng Ruby. Tapos, sundo mo pa ng Node, Node.js. Oo, there's concepts na nagtatranslate from one technology to another. Pero, there are nuances. Like sa Node.js, it's single-threaded. So, you can't really master that in one year. Yung maintindihan mo talaga yung pasikot-sikot nung, nung single-thread na yun. Paano mo paikot-ikutin yung asynchronous JavaScript? Tapos, dadagdagan mo pa ngayon ng TypeScript. Dadagdagan mo pa ngayon ng microservices. I can't even see, dito sa resume na to, wala akong nakikita may marunong ng microservices. Ha. Kasi, iba yon, <laughs> Ibang skill set yun. No? Tapos, nag-a-apply sila senior. Ha? For a senior, you expect a certain level of specialization. Eh. Oo, okay din yung marami kang alam. Pero, lalo na sa stage namin yun in this company, we, we, we need people na parang expert ka talaga sa ganito. Schema design, you have vast experience in schema design. Again, senior to at saka mid-level. Sa so juniors, hindi masyadong hiningi yun. So, gaya magalala, medyo napalayo ako. Pero, lawakan nyo yung market base nyo. Let yourself be discovered by companies outside of the Philippines. No? Make yourself easy to find. Kasama rin sa conversation namin yan. Teka, panay ganito lang to. Wala siyang extra curricular activities outside of yung academe, outside of the company na nagpapakita na passionate siya sa ginagawa niya. Like, I, I know this is kind of biased kasi ako active ako sa community. But I want to have a team na parang they have this sort of need to be part of tech communities. To give back. Hindi lang to give back. Kasi being part of those communities, yun yung way mo rin na parang matuto rin kung ano yung ginagawa ng ibang companies, ng ibang professionals. Nung mamukuha yun eh. We are looking for those things. Kaya rin naman karamihan ng mga hires namin galing din communities eh. <laughs> Sa communities na asali ako, maaki pa ako ng mga talents dyan. Mga promising people. Tapos kailangan namin, I reach out. Which is, sa ngayon, medyo tuyot. <laughs> But yeah, you need to broaden your market. Kaso, kailangan ng English. I've worked with a lot of engineers na ang bano mga English. So, excuse me for the term, ha? pero ganun. But somehow, we make it work. And it's not a huge barrier. Basta nagkakaintindihan tayo, ano? Nag-gets kita, nag-gets mo ako. The misunderstanding is minimal. Okay na yun. These people, lalo na yung mga napaka-thick ng accent, like, you know, uh, the Chinese, Vietnamese, or even some Indians, yung mahirap silang intindihin talaga, kung hindi mo talaga pauulitin, pakiinggan, these people are applying. Hindi sila takot mag-apply on the global stage. Pero bakit tayo mga Pinoy? Hindi yun yung parang first instinct natin eh. Hanap agad sa labas. At ang iniisip, maghahanap sa labas, mag-a-abroad agad, mag-OFW. Come on guys, ang naramdaman natin nung pandemic, ayan, pwede tayo mag-work remotely. And there are a lot of companies na willing to do that. Hire people remotely sa Philippines. Another tip, no? kung medyo sa tingin nyo, tight pa rin yung competition, sabihin natin, entry-level market sa English-speaking companies. Eh di, I don't know. No? Ano lang to? Uh, wild, wild idea. Try to learn a new language na hindi English. Sabihin natin, ano ba? Spanish? There are a lot of Spanish-speaking countries. Try to find a common or a widely spoken language. Then, pagka medyo natututo na kayo, mag-apply na kayo sa ano, hanap kayong trabaho. Spain, lalo na. Nako, pag-usapan natin yan uh, one of these days about the Spain opportunity. Hindi nila ako magsasalita. But, <laughs> there's a lot nga. Like, like in Spain, Israel, even China, Japan. May mga companies dyan na nga kailangan tao. The only thing that's limiting us from actually applying to these companies is the language barrier. Very few people would actually try to learn a language to look for jobs in those companies. 
kung isipin nyo yung sa point of view na yon, eh di mas onti yung sabi natin competition. If you feel na onti yung opportunities in a certain segment of a market, try to broaden that market. React is the most used currently na front-end framework. Pero, like for example, sa China, I think React isn't even the top choice for web applications. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's Vue, Vue.js. You never know, baka there might be a lot of great opportunities there. Unahin nyo na yung Europe, unahin nyo na yung US, unahin nyo na yung Canada, unahin nyo na yung Australia, New Zealand. Marami dyan. Huwag nyo yung ilimit sarili nyo sa Pilipinas. And huwag nyo rin ilimit sarili nyo sa React lang. Kung narang talaga nahirapan kayo, baka maybe I could try learning Vue, maybe I could try learning Angular. Tingnan nyo kung ano yung makakapag-create sa inyo ng biggest opportunity to get that tech role na gusto nyo. So, yun lang and thank you. If you have any more insights sa pwedeng i-share natin kay OP, dun sa nagpanong, lagay nyo na sa comments. Again, this has been Kuya Dev and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!